you, good Lord, this morning, and we thank God as we move in the month of Black History and uh, the month of February. We want to say to everybody that's out there, regardless of what color you are, you understand, we thank God for you. Amen. And we're here again today, Lord, to share with us, to share with you all. That is some of the things that uh, is on our heart, that is concerning, that is the word of God, and concerning deepening your commitment in him, because this is what we, cons we are concerned about. Amen. If, if uh, the text that we're going to embark upon is found in the book of Isaiah, that is the uh, 65th chapter, uh, and if we're going to start reading that is from the 24th verse, and that, that will be only the 24th verse. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. I will hear. Father, we thank you once again. We ask that you would bless us on this wonderful day. We ask that you would bless this service, and not only this service, but services all over the world. Thank you, God, for the word. Thank you, God, that we can look into your word. Thank you that it's milk and meat, not only as newborn babes, but we can eat it. We can drink the milk to the point whereby we can eat the meat. We ask that you would bless now. Be with us in a special kind of a way. Good, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sister Lori Turner is going to come to us with praise and worship at this time. Amen. Good morning, Joseph Campbell, and to all of our special guests. We bring you greetings and we invite you to pray with us, to praise with us, and to worship with us this morning. Hallelujah.
praise because of your love. I saw something in my family with my younger sister and brother, and that is when they got a certain age, my mother did what she called wean them off of milk. They were weaned. But I'm so glad that God has never weaned me off of his love. He just keeps on loving me. And guess what? I haven't been doing everything right over my life. And guess what? He just still loves me. And I thank God for that. I thank God for that song, believe it or not. Nice time for us to go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. There are many things that we ought to be praying about. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. And you know what I believe. I just believe that the battle was won on the cross, but with one in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus prayed. Amen. Sister Lord is going to come to us with a prayer song. And after that, we're going to ask Sister Linda Johnson when she come and lead us to the throne of grace. Amen.
thank God for Jesus. Amen. And I thank God for his word. This is one of the texts that I actually believe that I just read for you and that we are about to embark upon. Amen. And um, you ought to want to believe this even if you don't. He said that it shall come to pass that if, if uh, they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, he said, that I hear. And that's a very important text right there. It means a whole lot. I don't know about nobody else, but it means a whole lot that is to me. And again, this week, this text is not only just for African American, it's for everybody. But for the African American, you need to listen to this one. Amen. And my subject is, I've already taken care of it. I've already taken care of it. The subject is, I've already taken care of it. Have you ever felt like giving up and saying to yourself that I've been, amen, I've been overtaken by fear and many things. And you're much like, you're much like the Apostle Paul when he said that there's trouble on every side. And I feel like that right now sometimes when the phone rings and I don't know what's on the other end, whether or not it's a cheerful voice or whether or not somebody is basically telling me about one of their loved ones that has passed on with the COVID. Amen. But there's trouble all around us. Am I right? Amen. And my life sometimes just feels like sinking sand. Have you ever been there? Amen. Some people say my life is so complicated. Amen. Until I say to myself sometimes, they say that I don't know whether or not my life is going to ever change. And you come to that place and that plateau in your life whereby you don't know what to do. You just don't know what to do. Amen. You talk about, uh, uh, talk to all of your confidants and your BFF for lives and your road dogs, your friends and all of that. Amen. You're going to the therapy. Amen. But you still have addictions. No matter how many therapists you go to, you still have addiction. Amen. And it's just a, 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 a very different time in your life. You're working, you look like you can't get enough money uh, that is to make it. Amen. You still can't get ahead. But now, with the addictions, amen, amen, and in many cases, you think I'm talking about crack cocaine and being a kleptomaniac and you know what I'm, either pulling a gun and putting it in somebody's face and gun for, amen, amen. But Trump folks are addicted to having a credit card. Am I right? A card is their master. They call it master charge. That's your master. They're addicted, amen. And their motto is, I can buy anything I want up, up concerning their spending and their buying, they'll say things like this, I have to have the best. I have to have the best, amen. And, and you manage to do what? You manage to be educated, that is, by your parents in the hand of God, amen. You understand? You're going to all the private schools and you even go to church, amen. You were brought up in church, you see, but you never, ever did what? Give your life. God. A lot of folks go to church now, but a lot of them have never given their life to God. Isn't it amazing that you've been able to sit at God's table and just smell all of the good food and, and all of the festivity and all of the uh, uh, a feast that he had and you never tasted it. You've been to church all of your life and you're not saved. You're not saved. And, and, and there can be what a dark place, a dark part of you, your life will buy. You are not what? You're not honest. You're not saved. You tell lies to people. You're lying about your addiction. Amen. And the lying ain't nothing but an addiction, believe it or not. And, and when you are, are, are addicted, you're going to do everything you can to feed that addiction. Am I right? Amen. And one sin does what? Give birth to another sin, believe it or not. And I know people, amen, who write what they call them, who have a little fraudulent checks and they, I mean, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about? They also made uh, in a habit at returning merchandising to stores and all of that. I don't think you can do so easily do that now. They won't let you do it. Amen. Now, some people have never, ever been delivered from the sin weights that so easily beset them. Amen. In other words, they've never done what? Cry out to God. They've never got down on their knees and called out to God. Amen. And we meet and we see people, amen, every day whose life is going nowhere. Amen. And they're thinking way down, way down in their heart is that I'll never change. That I'll never change. 
Amen. And nobody wants to die with all of these uncertainties around them and without unpacking all of the stuff that you have in your life. As I talked about a, 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 a vessel on last week and a vessel ain't nothing but a container. But I got a question this week. What's in your container? What kind of spirit is in your container? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I hope you just don't have a bunch of waste in your container, but we're looking for a change. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, and way down on the inside, we feel like we're in the devil's vice, but I'm so glad that I ran into this text. This text. This is a very important text to me. Look how it starts off. It said, and it shall come to pass. I like that. When I heard that, I said, hold up. Hold up now. It shall come to pass. You understand? This phrase means that it shall happen. It's going to take place in the course of events. Amen. It's going to take place in the course of time. It's going to come about. It's going to occur. It's going to be fulfilled. And then here is the correct use of this uh, expression that is that all things, good or bad, will come to pass. It's going to come to pass now. You understand? It's going to show up one of these days, even if it's announced or even if it's unannounced. Amen. Now this quote is in the Bible 1,381 times. You understand? You see, the things that God has promised you shall come to pass. Has he promised you anything? You understand? You see, now listen to these very questions. Very, very carefully, excuse me. Now your ability to believe that determines your ability to receive that. That it will come to pass. Your ability to believe that, you got to believe, you understand. Your ability to believe that will determine your ability to receive that. Because you have what? You have to be persuaded. Am I right? In your heart that is going to come to pass. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You understand? Paul said, what did Paul say? Paul said, I know who I am. Believed. First of all, he said believe. And I am persuaded. You got to be persuaded. And somebody got to be persuaded. You got to be persuaded that the woman that you walked out to the altar with and y'all need, y'all knelt together and you said, I do. You got to be persuaded that that's the right woman. Oh, y'all don't hear me. You ain't going to talk to me today. But I know what I'm talking about. You understand. You see, there's some things in my heart, I declare, I never believed. And there's some things in my heart. I did believe, believe it or not. You understand? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I never believed in my heart that there's nobody on the face of this earth that's not, uh, that's not praying for me. Somebody is praying for me. I'm sorry. Somebody is praying for me. I don't have to take no poll. I don't have to go on no Facebook. Somebody praying for me. I'm sorry. Even if you don't believe it, if you don't like me, I actually believe somebody, living soul, sends up a prayer for me every now and then. Now, there's another thing I believe, too, because I was a young man that was brought up in poverty. I don't believe I have to be broke. <laughs> Some of y'all do. Well, you know, I'm just, I'm just making it. Well, how long you going to be just making it? You're not here. You're going to just make it all your life. I just don't believe that Jesus said the poor folk would be with us always, but you got to believe in your mind I don't have to be one of them. You understand? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, and then you need to uh, go out and get you a job with your college degree in yourself. You need to do that. Get you a job. I met a gentleman while I was in, I, I was in the service during the, the, the Vietnam War. He did not believe that he would ever have bad health. And I said, why? And you told me why. So many things he did that a day. He said, I don't believe I'll never be sick. You understand? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You have belief also. Some of y'all get up and shout it out and pray that I believe that I'm going to be the head and not the tail. How many of y'all ever heard that before? You know you have. You have beliefs. Amen. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And I actually believe this, that nobody's Nobody's curse I don't have to live under. I don't care who's in here. You can be my family. I don't have to live under that kind of curse. I don't have to live under either ignorance, jealousy, stupidity. You understand? 
How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? If you believe that stuff, you understand what people say. You better be careful. I've heard people say, I don't believe she'll be a never amount to anything to understand. And this is the reason why they give you A, B, and C to understand. You see, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I don't believe that they'll make it without him or her and this and that and the other. I don't believe they're going to make it because they have a crazy daddy and a silly mom. I've heard stuff like that all of my life. But your belief pattern and what you believe is very, very important. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And you can't walk right saying that I know that I'm stuck here, and, amen, and, 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 and I'm not going to ever go anywhere because of my belief pattern. No, 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 no. You can't do that. But you have to have something way down on the inside. It's called a conviction in your spirit. Something way down that says it shall come to pass. Shall come to pass. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to be stuck here in this mess all of my life. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, and I'm trying to say that. I ain't trying to say I ain't going to never be broke. I'm not trying try to say I know everybody's just going to love me and they're not going to say the debilitating thing about me. You understand? But as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. And I have the right to believe in faith. You understand that if God says it's going to come to pass. Then what? Then what? I believe it's going to come to pass. Oh, it's going to come to pass. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, because I believe and we know, you understand, that God is going to turn it around, believe it or not. You see, some, something was telling us uh, that it shall come to pass one day. And guess what? I don't have to be the borrower. I can be the lender. Something is telling me that shall come to pass one day. And guess what? I don't have to be that is the tail. I can be the head. Oh, it's going to come to pass. But something I'll speak to you and say to you that you don't have to be uh, an unsaved person that's working for the devil and all of that. And those demons and imps that are in hell, you understand. But it shall come to pass that you can be saved and washed with the blood of the Lamb. Amen. You see, and because God is going to do what He before you even call, God's got the answer. I was in a restaurant one time and uh, I was eating the food and it was delicious. The food was good, you understand. And I had uh, uh, my um, uh, uh, my ticket. Uh, I, I, I paid there. They gave me my ticket or whatever. And I looked at it and I said, hmm, I see why the food is good, you understand? Because it costs a pretty penny. But, I, but at that time, I didn't care how much it cost. I was eating and it was okay. But when I got that is to the cashier and got ready to pay, guess what she said? It's been already taken care of. Somebody in the restaurant had paid my bill. Now, you can say what you want. <laughs> so the Lord is a good feeling when somebody's already taken care of something. Yeah, y'all can talk what you want. Man. Has anybody ever taken care of something for you? They said it's already. So I'm already taken care of. You understand? You see, before you came to this restaurant, before you looked at the menu and made your order, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, before after you, after they drop that ticket down and say it's time to pay, before all of that, guess what? God had already taken care of them. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Before, 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 before. What before is during the period of a time preceding a particular event. Amen. Before, before. That word before means something. Before you call 911. Amen. Before, before you got sick, that is with COVID, and your body was just right with pain. Before, before, before you were down to your very last dime. Before, before I got a chance to talk to you. Before, yeah, amen. Before I came into that little bit of money. Before my surgery. Before I got saved. Before, and you understand, my car and everything was repossessed. God Himself goes before you. This is the check that God gave me at this time because I was troubled, very troubled by the COVID and all of that. And as I sat down one day, I remembered this text. Because you know the old preacher used to preach 
uh, a little different text at some time than we preach now. And I remember him saying before, you understand, before you were born, before you understand, you got to the age of accountability. That God himself had gone before you. Amen. I like that. And then he said, while you was yet speaking, you understand. While you was yet speaking and talking, God was taking care of it. While you were yet speaking about going to the optometrist and getting your glasses, guess what God was doing? He was already listening and hearing you talk. And he went before. I'm so glad that God has ears that he can hear. And I'm glad that he has eyes that he can see and has hands that he can touch. But I'm so glad that he heard my cry. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? God can hear you cry still while you're moving and while you're working and doing what you're doing. Jeremiah 3 and 3, it said, call unto me. You got to cry. But before you do that, God has gone ahead of you. God has gone ahead of the pandemic, y'all. I don't have to worry after I read that. You understand? As long as you keep my name on the list, I don't know how long you're going to keep it on the list, but I do know one thing. You'll never get me to believe that he left all of this up to medical science. I believe that God has gone before us. He's paid the bill, paid the price, just like he did with me and my wife in that restaurant. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. You don't even have to count those little pennies in your pocket. Because God has already gone before you. And if God is for you, who in the world can be against you? He needs to touch somebody's heart right now and say, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Because God has already gone before you. Before you. Isn't that beautiful? Some people don't even think like that. And during this black history time, y'all, don't give up. Don't give up. And it's a little kind of dim. You talk, you understand. Amen. Some of it got a little slavery tone to it. But you don't want me to talk about that right now. But guess what? I'm so glad that I got somebody going before me. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I got somebody going before me in every aspect of life. Even before I preach, I got to have me a song of praise and worship of somebody to say a song. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I need God to go before that appointment. You got to go to the doctor. God needs to go before it. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? That prayer that you've been praying a long time for your children and for your children's children. I'm so glad that God has gone before us. And all I got to do is walk in the light and go walk ahead of the light because God Himself He's gone before you. And I wish African Americans would think that way. He brought you through slavery. Killing you out of a pagan land. You understand? You know what I mean? That was this land after he brought you over here. And then bless you so much. You understand? And you don't have to worry about no African Americans being around. You understand? Americans stuck with us the rest of their lives. The rest of their lives. And I thank God for this. But just remember this. You understand? Before you vote, before you do whatever, just say to yourself, I thank God. That he has paved the way. He has gone before us. And without a shadow of a doubt, I'm believing and trusting in God with all of my heart. That's what I'm doing. Trusting him. Because he's doing what? He's going before you. You understand? It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. But unless it's going to be all right, either. you understand? God has already gone before you. And you can be, you can be blessed. I thank God for Jesus. And I thank God for being here today. May God bless you. Come on, brother.
God has a plan for our lives. We thank you. Praise God. He has gone before us. Just ask that you would continue to lift up his name to magnify him for who he is in our lives. Now, if you want to be a part of this ministry, you want to sow a seed, you can do that by giving the fire. And also, you can put a check in the mail. Joseph Conquer Avenue Church of God, 48212. We praise you. We thank you for all that you do. Be encouraged in the Lord this coming week. I'll be praying for you as you pray for us. Father, we thank you. We thank you for going before us. For mapping out what we all need to do is follow your directions, follow your path. Have your way in each one of our lives, Lord, as we, Lord, continue to meditate on you, on your word, that you continue to bless us, to lead us, to guide us. We thank you for our pastor, Lord, for the word that he's preached on today. Now, God, we ask you to bless us. As we leave this place, we're not your presence. For us in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.